Hi, my name is Heno Goitom and you're listening to Titanic Takes podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Tatonic Takes. This is Favi, your usual host, and I'm actually here with a really special guest. What's up, Hino Goitam? What's up, man? It's been a while. What's up, man? But, um, yeah, I appreciate yeah. you coming on. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah, so, I mean, it's been a while since you've, I mean, been in a Quakes uniform, but I was like, you know what? We need to get this guy on. We need to hear this story of what happened in the earthquakes um, a couple of years ago, but it, it's great that we can finally, you know, link up and, and talk about this. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem. I'm, I'm here to like, to give maybe um another story uh, of the of the thing and um, you know like a, a, a another perspective uh, out of it. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. Um, yeah. first off, actually, I want to ask you, how many languages do you speak? You you played all around the world, <laughs> so yeah, so uh, Swedish because mm-hmm. I'm born and raised in Sweden. Uh, yeah, English. Um, Tigrinya, which is my uh, my parents' uh, yep. language, or like Eritrea, yeah, and then I was in Italy, and then Spain, and Spain I'm I'm fluid, and in Italy is more like Italian is more like I need to go back to Italy for like three four months and I will catch mm. it out, you know? but yeah. I was there for like only one one and a half years, so it's like I didn't get I didn't get that many friends, but in yeah. Spain I was there for eight years, so I'm I'm more oh. fluent in Spanish, yeah, but I understand uh, Italian, but it's a little bit difficult to to speak, yeah. So, hablas un poquito de español, si quieres, hablamos. Sí, si quieres también. <laughs> perfecto, perfecto. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. Um, and then, what's your favorite place to live? I mean, you lived everywhere, right? So, what what do you call home? Is it back home in Stockholm or? What? Yeah, when I come, I, I, as soon as I left Stockholm when I was 18, then I came back to Stockholm when I was like 28. Mm-hmm. I knew during those 10 years that I would never live outside Sweden or outside Stockholm. So yeah. in my head, it was always to go out in a, an adventure and try to uh, achieve my goals in, in football. But I, yeah. I always knew that I'm, I'm going to go back to Stockholm. That's what my foundation is. My, mm. my parents are there, my family, yeah. my friends. So Stockholm is my, my base. So um, this... This is kind of like a little bit personal of a question, but what made your parents choose to go to Sweden when they were emigrating from their country? Um, a lot of the times, like myself, my parents went to America um, from Uruguay, a small country in South America for anybody that doesn't know. But um, they always yeah. have a story, right? My my family was running away from a really bad economy. Um, what what happened in, in possibly a home country that made them move to Sweden? Yeah. So Eritrea and Ethiopia was in, in a war. Uh, mm. for from 61 to 91 that's 30 years yeah and a lot of Atrian fled the fled the country mm. and they go by by people talking to people like if yeah. you have uh, for example my uncles were in in Norway in Sweden oh wow so that make them a natural destination to come to Sweden and there are Atrians for example in in Germany probably their relatives were in Germany before them and they're like mm. you know Germany is a good way to live in and then they'll go to Germany so Atrians there's a lot of Atrians in in the US mm. uh, Germany uh, Sweden but I think it's like the closest one where are they and then you just follow yeah of course and yeah making a community I mean make as close to feeling home right so yeah. I totally yeah. understand the feeling of wanting to have a community. And uh, is yeah. there is there a lot of um, sorry? Correct me if I'm wrong. Etrians, right? Is that how you pronounce it? Etrians. Yeah. yeah. Um, in Stockholm. A lot. Like wow. We have Etrian. Yeah, we have like uh, on the uh, on the 24th of, of May, it's the Independence Day, and wow. we have like a big festival in in Stockholm. And it's I mean, awesome. when I mean a lot, it's it's a lot. Like it, to uh, to really understand. All mm-hmm. my parents' friends are all Eritreans. Oh wow! So it's like uh, yeah, so it's a big community, and it's the same in the US. Like yeah. you go, um, well, you have you have to go to the city where everybody is, you know. Yeah. And also like in, in Germany, like you go there, you're like, this is Eritrea. When you look around, it's like <laughs> it's big, you know. So 
it's yeah. not like it's only 10 or 10 or 12 it's like yeah. it's big you know when i when i went to wedding when i was a kid you know our weddings is like 900,000 people wow. so yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's it's a lot it's a lot that that's awesome i mean you grew up in that culture then so when you put on that national shirt eventually you felt like you were this was you know this was my upcoming you know this is my home like yeah. this is my people i need to represent them in a way that my parents would be proud so that's awesome to hear that you are still involved in your childhood with that community by any yeah. chance do you know where the city in america is or the united states where um there's a whole bunch of no but they are they're spread out mm. um i know that uh, there were some in in san jose oh wow uh, yeah but i think i think if you just google yeah, but i know like for google example it. it's one festival in minneapolis i think because they oh, told okay. me to yeah they asked me if i could come but i i say it was i couldn't because it was during my during my season uh, yeah. football season Makes so sense. they have like a big like air tree and festival air tree and like football uh oh, tournament wow. Yeah. So, um, and for example, in Germany, you have like Frankfurt, who is really like you know, it's a city where a lot of Eritreans are are oh, there. Wow. You know, so you just have to like, it, maybe it's not all the all the cities in the U.S., but if you pick the right cities, you will see right. it's a lot of people here. You know? Yeah, and especially if in Minneapolis, if they're having a, a festival, they they must have a huge population of um, Eritreans. So that's yeah, all, that's uh, awesome to know. I mean. Going to your childhood a little bit, who was your um, boyhood idol growing up playing soccer? Like, who did you look up to? Who did you feel like you wanted to be like? Well, I remember uh, George Weah when he played in Milan. He had mm. uh, the red uh, Diadora shoes, and I just brought brought them because I'm <laughs> a big Milan Milan fan. And yeah, I used to look at George Weah, and and before George Weah, you know, uh, since I like Milan. Uh, I liked uh, Van, B- Van Basten, Hullit, uh, mm. um, Reikard, you know, that, that era. Right. Um, but then after Zidane came came <laughs> along. And then from there, I just said that Zidane is the way I I like. I wanted to play like him. Mm. Um, you know, like doing the roulette and you know, yeah. all these things. Like Zidane was probably the one that I, that I idolized most uh, mm. after after George Real, you know. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. I mean... Yeah, it seems like your your football style comes from all walks walks of life. So that's cool to see that you yeah. you know wanted to be like Zidane, exactly like Zidane. So let me let me ask you really quickly, what was your favorite football moment before pre San Jose? So before you reached San Jose, what was your favorite football moment that you achieved? Well, first it will be you know like you're eighteen. Uh, and you have uh, graduated. Well, th- this happened before I graduated from, I think you call it high school, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. compared to mm-hmm. And like, let's say three months before I graduated high school, I, I signed my first uh, uh, senior, or like, like, like my first contract abroad, yeah. which was with Udinese. Yeah. And I knew like three months before I graduated high school that I'm going to like, my dream come true to play in Serie A in Italy yeah. will be will come true and right. on top of that I graduated high school and then one month later I was I was a Udinese player like that was a moment where I felt like my hard work for like 10 to 13 years have paid off you know? yeah and that's um, a big club right so you were must yeah static. it is it is yeah yeah we we came we came fourth uh and went and went to Champions League so it's like like a big big yeah, um that's huge thing in the yeah um the second thing, well, it's when I had my first game in Udinese and, you know, I, at first I came to Udinese, I was first month in the preseason, I, I scored a lot of goals mm. and, you know, it's like, I felt like, oh, this season I can really com- uh, be Make, competitive when it yeah, comes yeah, to yeah. playing in the starting 11 and I got a problem with my knee, so I was mm. out for like one year, so, you know, the dream come true, didn't come true one month later because I was out for one year. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you know, when you are in that age, it's like you thinking I have, I have worked so hard for this right. and then just to be there. And then one month later, I'm going to be off for one, one year. And then I came back second year. I didn't play the whole year. And then, you mm. know, one game against Inter, we are, we are down with 1-0. It's seven minutes left. And, you know, our coach Paletti says, Henog, you're going to come in. And that was my... That was my first game, and I come in, mm-hmm. and then seven minutes later, in the ninth minute, I scored the one-one. Well, yeah, and that is like 
you, you can see like your phone is getting bombed on with, with <laughs> messages and phone yeah. calls because, you know, it's you're doing a, your first game, you're doing right. it against a big club like Inter. Right. I'm, I'm a Milan fan, so it's like a lot of things <laughs> happening, you know. And at that time, I didn't have a car, so after the game, I just <laughs> walked home from the stadium and people wow. like look at, looking at me like, because normally football players take their car from yeah, the yeah, stadium yeah. home and, you know, people, 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 people stop you for autograph, you know. And I was yeah. like the guy who was like 19 years old just having my backpack just walking home and then that's like awesome. yeah like half an hour before i just scored against inter you know so it's like a different right. world so that was also a proud proud moment yeah that, that that seems like a very humble moment too especially if you walked home i mean <laughs> did you buy a car right after that you're like dude i scored against inter, i didn't have man. a license you know i oh. i got i got a car from the t- from the team but i didn't have a license so the car just uh. was just used when my father came came for vacation Mm, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, so would you say that's your favorite goal, that one you scored against Inter? Yeah, when it comes to, like, um, feeling-wise also, because yeah. you have to, like, include that. It's not, it's not, the, it's not the, the, beautiful, the beautiful goal I've scored, but it's mm. more like, you know, the feeling, like, you know, yeah. you worked so hard to be a pro, and then you get one year off because you're injured, and you come yeah. back, you know, and... Till to, to today, I still have the, the you know the Guinness rec- World Record in Serie A about the guy who scored a goal per minute because oh, I only scored, wow. I only played seven minutes, you know. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah. So I only played seven minutes. So if I, if I, if an offer would come from Serie A right now, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna go. I want to have that record still, you know. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You get a you get an offer from like yeah like AC right now you're like uh, yeah, I'll think I'm about not, it I'll think about it <laughs> maybe I go but I only train you know I'm yeah. not gonna play any games I'm, not, I'm just gonna have that world record you know yeah, definitely <laughs> okay what's your favorite jersey did you exchange jerseys with anybody while you were playing yes I did a lot in in Spain um, hmm. but if I have a, a if I have a favorite no because I you know I I exchange shirt with Henri, mm. with the Pique, uh, I even have this Latin shirt, like I'll ha- I have a lot, but I have a funny story, that was in 2007, where we play against Barcelona, uh, mm-hmm. away, in the Nou Camp, and uh, you know, I'm thinking, you know, this is my first game against Barcelona, I'm thinking, you know what, I, maybe I can exchange a uh, shirt with somebody in, in half time, and then also after the game, so I get yeah, two yeah. shirts, you know. <laughs> You know, me, like, real, like, I want to say real ghetto, ghetto-minded guy, you know, like, I, I need to take this advantage, you know what I mean? But, um, so, That's I, I that went to Henri. Yeah. Yeah, 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 so I went to Henri, he gave me his shirt, uh, halftime, and I said, okay, that's one one, go, one to go, like, right. one left, and then, like, when it was, like, 10, 15 minutes uh, left of the game, I was talking to Piol, and I said, can I have your shirt, and he said, yes. I said, perfect. So you have two star players, you know. Yeah. And then get the game finish. And out of a sudden, you know, PK comes to me. It's like, hey, can I sh- 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 change shirt with you? And I'm thinking, what? do you even know who I am? Like, <laughs> and I, I, I didn't have the guts to tell him no, because I already talked to Fiol. So I'm like, you know what? You're a star player. You come to me. Okay, of course we can change, you know. So yeah, I right. didn't take uh, Fiol's shirt. And I took PK. P- P- and I think. Piquet became like the real star like two years later. Yeah, so yeah, it was yeah. A perfect, you know, it was like a perfect uh, uh, shirt to have. Like so, right. So I was like in that time, like my 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 um, self confidence like boosted. Like okay, Piquet wanted my shirt. I didn't come to him. <laughs> that's awesome. So that was like a funny story. You know? Yeah, no, that's definitely that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, right. Who could ask? Who could say that Piquet wanted their shirt? Not a lot of people. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, but that was a, like a nice thing. And that's why I always like when Piquet played, I'm like, I'm hoping that he goes really good for him because he was so yeah. humble towards yeah. me. And I'm hoping that he's, everything goes well for him. And from that moment until today, yeah, I don't know how many trophies I won. So maybe it was a karma for him also, like, but but, but a positive way. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, you know, <laughs> he go, <laughs> not a lot of people that are, you know, you know, Piquet is married to Shakira. You, you ever think, like, man, the guy who's married to Shakira wanted my shirt? You know, like, yeah, yeah, no, but well, yeah. at that time, I don't think he was with Shakira. Yeah, no, 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 uh, no, 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 no. So I was just in my head, it was just like, yeah, Piquet wanted my shirt. Like, I, I don't, I didn't, I didn't brag so much about yeah. it. It was more like, 
bragging for myself. Like right, 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 I'm right. like, oh, this this felt nice, you know. And then yeah. just leave it there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he knew that you had the fastest scoring goal in CDI's Guinness World Record. I mean, he knew that. I don't know. He, he knew something. I don't know. Maybe a relative just, you know, I played in Murcia. So maybe he had a relative from Murcia. I don't know. But I would never find out the real story. <laughs> I got I to gotta tweet at him. I got to find out. Why do you want the code of Stuart? He's a stud. That's why. He, he probably told me he's a stud, yeah. you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then what was the favorite, your favorite jersey that you wore? So. A really nice design jersey that you liked. You know, to be honest, like it's not because I play in AIK, mm -hmm. but AIK has has like the nice. the um, yeah. you know I don't know what you call this the batch maybe you call it oh the uh, badge. yeah yeah yeah. You know, yeah like it's very good design and you know mm. like Nike are doing really good project uh, projects with with the shirts and mm. you know like when we play in the cup we play with special design shirts. Oh wow! Um, so yeah, so like in the last like three years, uh, AIK, you know, the shirt is really like I, I really like it, and mm. you can see that. I think it was one week ago where, you know, when uh, Ronaldo went to uh, Juventus, mm -hmm. and you know the Juventus shirt with Ronaldo on it, mm. I think like soccer bible or something. They had I don't know how many clicks they had. Oh wow! And then we had our shirt. And they yeah. matched that. Uh, well, in, it, they even matched. It was higher than the Ronaldo shirt. And the Ronaldo shirt wow. was, I think, the, the number one in the world. So yeah, AIK is getting a lot of international uh, views and uh, people are knowing more and more about the shirt. So I will say the AIK shirt when it comes to the badge and yeah. how it is designed and also on the on the shirt and the colors. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm looking at the design right now. It's actually, I mean, the way they market it is, is insane. It looks like a really nice yeah. shirt and with Nike collaboration. It's like if you want a shirt yeah. from Sweden, or anything that's the team to do it so definitely yeah, yeah really nice all right so um so what was it like growing up and playing in sweden um was it you know everything you would have thought of was there a lot of i guess a lot of jealousy how did you feel was it hostile situation how did you, were they inviting how did you feel you know um you have the 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 real question, or the real, but the, the question that you have to ask is more like the area where I grew up. Mm -hmm. How was that? Because mm -hmm. where I grew up is what you call, you know, you have uh, zo uh, zones. Uh, I want to say, but areas where oh. it's a lot of immigrants. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, so where I live, it was like a lot of immigrants. It's like mm -hmm. the majority is are, are immigrants. So we didn't have that jealousy kind of type of thing because yeah, everybody yeah. have helping. the same journey to Sweden. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. It, it would be different if we lived in another place in Sweden where right. let's say there's a lot of Swedish people there and we yeah. are immigrants. Then it's a little bit different because the culture, you know, it will, it will clash to, to yeah. each other. But here it's like everybody more or less are working hard to mm. get the, the bills done, yeah. uh, the bill paid and people are playing football in, in the street right so uh, and and the team that i played in maybe we had one swede in the team and the rest is like immigrants like yeah, or yeah. kids who were their parents are immigrants you know right. and we are born in, in sweden so exactly yeah we just we just played and you know our our life were more or less like going to school in the morning mm. coming back or you train with the team or you play in the in the in the streets and yeah. Sometimes I joke with my parents. I say, I was probably your like favorite kid because you you should you have no pressure of of uh, fixing uh, activities. I just went mm. out, played football, and then come right. home and it was dinner, and that's it. You know, <laughs> they didn't have to like do like planning the whole week and stuff. Right. You know, I was going to play football in the streets, and yeah. my parents could just see from the kitchen where I am because you can see clearly the, mm. the pitch. You know, and no matter what it doesn't matter the weather uh, it never stopped us like if it was snow mm. we were thinking now we can train our bicicleta you know like <laughs> jump in the air you know yeah because you can land soft you know what oh mean? that's right yeah uh, yeah yeah so the the weather never stopped us wow you know um and at that time we didn't have any any phones so uh, sometimes you can feel like if it was a hard game in the street you knew other people were coming only to watch uh, the, the game, wow. you know? So, so for us, it was, I would say, 
uh, I grew up very nice. Uh, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have, I didn't have millions, mm. but at the same time, I, I was not poor. Yeah. Um, uh, my my parents always say, if you if you need money, we are here. But at the same time, mm. they showed me the value of money. So right. uh, we always said that the money that is in the house is for everybody. Yeah. Uh, so I always have to think for my parents' sake also. So in that right. case. No, like good life. Yeah, no, that, that that sounds like a great family. I mean, support. Yeah. It seems it seems very similar to, to even, even myself. Like living as an, an immigrant parents in America, it seems like yeah. it's almost like a great foundation. I mean, I love yeah. hearing those stories, like of immigrants in other parts of the world, because I mean, that's yeah. that's what it's about: family, yeah, and yeah, being there for one each other. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Awesome. So when you were moving from league to league. Did you ever experience some sort of um, inequality or any any sort of heckling because of the color of your skin or anything like that? I know you played in Italy and Spain, and sometimes they can be a little a little tough. The fans. Did you ever experience yeah. any of that? Well, you know, in in Spain, uh, if somebody's is black or mm-hmm. is 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 semi black, also uh, mm-hmm. they always say the word negro, like mm. and. For me, um, I know that they are not saying things to like to mock me. Mm. It's just a thing that they always said, like culture wise, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just said, and I just said to him, "Listen, I'm not gonna be angry uh, and threat you to say don't say that, blah, blah, blah. Because if it's different, if you if you me- meant to hurt me, that's a different thing. But right, here, right. in a calm way, I just explain things. Like I say, let's turn it around." you don't say Blanco to other people who are white. Mm. But, but you tell them, by, you go by their name. But when it comes to a black guy or semi-black guy, whatever you want to call it, yeah. you say Negro to everybody. So I just said, can you see where I'm going with this? You know what yeah. I mean? And then, you know, they just uh, accepted uh, what I said. I think they yeah, understood. And then, you know, that's... and they called me by my name. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. I mean, yeah, never. That's That's a great way to put it. I mean, yeah. The only the only culture I think that's called white people white is Mexican culture. They call them huevos. Yeah. And there's a player yeah. on the on the San Jose Earthquakes that they call huevo fierro. <laughs> so it's yeah. pretty. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like, oh, that's that's actually a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, if I know that somebody deliberately wants to hurt me, yeah, I'll be more aggressive in my tone. Yeah. But if I know that, listen, he's born and raised in Spain. And maybe things culture wise, they've been done in this for a long time. And maybe they haven't uh, uh, like thought about what, what they're saying. Right. It, for me, it's kind of hard to be angry. Yeah. To be I just say, you know what? I know you're a good guy. Just from my point of view, this is how it is. You know what yeah. I mean? exactly. And then from there, they just, they just accepted it. You know, it's, a, yeah. it's like you can imagine how somebody feel, feels, but you can never know 100%. Yeah. You know, and that is why also I have a responsibility to tell them how I feel. Right. Um, and, you know, from there, you're like, no, it's, it wasn't. But at the same time, you know, it's, I always say, I'm the wrong guy to, to ask that question. Me going to Spain, mm-hmm. uh, I was there for like three months in Getafe. And mm-hmm. then after that, in the summer, I went to, to San Jose. Uh, just because I, I, I really, I really were interested in how things were done in the U.S. And the mm. only thing to know it is to by actually going, going there. Um, yeah, you cannot. It's it's difficult to just go there for one week and see and then go back. Uh, you need to be there. You know what I mean? And right. I saw things that I that I liked uh, because it was different from what I'm used to. What What did you like? Um, how How well prepared uh, players are when it comes to the to the strength, uh, oh, wow. the, you know, the, the accelerations, like maximum speed. Um, people were very athletic. Mm. Uh, that you can you can really see, like, oh, here, they're doing doing it well. Like, you can yeah. see, like, people are strong and quick and stuff like that, you know. Um, yeah, physical league, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I felt like the way they prepared the team, like, I, I felt like, oh, this is something you can, you can bring in, you know, to the mm. luggage later on when you're, want to be a coach yeah and um but i was not used to the tactical part uh, mm. you know i'm 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 being in Serie A, i'm in la liga right. sweden and you know the way you do tactically wise people are 
tactical tactically they are really really prepared you know yeah uh and that was a little bit different when it mm-hmm. comes to to the us but you know in in every country you can always take something that you like you know and it was it was thing that i that i liked yeah and unfortunately you got handed a coach that wasn't very offensive minded um dom mm-hmm. kinnear he's a great guy everybody loved him but unfortunately, he played a very defensive game and you came into a system that was very defensive, right? It was defensive, you know, load crosses into the box and maybe head one down and then tap one in. But it was never like a very tactical game that you were probably used to in Spain and Italy. So it must have been kind of a shock, right, when you first got on the pitch and find out no, found out what they were doing. You no, know, you know, I had I've had so many coaches. Yeah, and- that's true. Mm-hmm. I've been, you know, I think one of my, like one of my strengths is to to adapt because mm. in football you have to adapt. You know, you can mm-hmm. never have the same coach for ten years. You know, and right, right. Some Especially are defensive, some is offensive. Yeah, and some some coaches like a lot of crosses. Some coaches mm. like uh, plays centrally. It's it's okay. It's um, that's why we love football because it's it's different from person to person. But yeah, I think my biggest problem, and I know that it's that. When I don't get a proper preseason, mm. I I cannot express myself. It's been right. like that for well since I was let's say 27, 28. Before you know when you are 20, it doesn't matter. You can you don't have to play three months and then you come and you are fresh. Yeah. You know? But I needed that to be. I needed I need a preseason and to like to to paint the the, the whole story. Um, I finished in AIK 2015 October, mm-hmm. and. In March, I, I joined Gaddafi. That's five months later. And right. no preseason or nothing. You know? And you can train how much you want by yourself. It's not the same thing. Mm-hmm. So I come to Gaddafi. And I needed time to... I needed like a preseason. But the problem is that I came to Gaddafi in March. And that is like... I think we had 12 games before season ends. So I'm mm-hmm. going to the deep sea directly. Yeah, right. Everybody and you can feel like after, after some sprints, so like you can feel... Uh, the breathing is very, very yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, intense, you know. Right. And then I uh, left uh, Getafe in May. And then from May, I joined, I think, the Quakes in August. That's three mm-hmm. months again. Yeah. Uh, hello. And then I come in August. And what happened? We have, I think it was 12 or 15 games left. Like it was like the last third or something of the, of the season. Yeah. Uh, something like that. And then it's like, again, I'm going to uh, try to come back. You know what I mean? And then it's like, I knew th- when I played in the Quakes, the moment in the, in the pitch, I knew like, for example, I have to sprint from A to B to be able to score or to be able to be, to be passed in. Mm-hmm. But I didn't have the physical to do that. I knew like, I, I can't, my legs are not able to do it. Mm. You know? So you go around playing in, a, in the same tempo instead of having, you know, like the tempo that goes up and high, up and down, you know, like yeah, you right, do right. When, you are, when you're fresh. So I cannot say, I, I won't say it. It's because of the coach. Mm. You know, I understand what you're, what you're getting, what, what you're coming from. But I, in my pers- perspective, yeah, is I needed a preseason. Yeah. And, and I felt like the quick fans didn't see the real me. Like yeah. I felt like that was a little bit that, I sometimes think about like because I I love the city San Jose my yeah. my me and my my wife and me we were like this city is, is closest to one where I can feel like you know what I can live here for a couple of years it's like mm. the tempo is slow people are nice yeah you know and I felt like imagine if I would have played there for like let's say three years in San Jose yeah. uh, then you have a proper preseason and stuff like that and that yeah. is why I think people get shocked when they're like oh he became captain in AIK after yeah. the San Jose, uh, yeah, you yeah. know and he you know and I'm I have been the goal scorer of the team yeah. three years in a row now we right. won the we won the gold in AIK and and the goals that I score is like I didn't know that he had that in him yeah, yeah. I know and because I'm that's how I am as a player I need that preseason yeah. I need to build up or else I, I don't I don't have I'm not like maybe other players who can just don't play for three months and then they train only for two weeks and then they are fresh directly and to, sense, to, yeah. to run, you know what I mean? And that was something like I sometimes think about like, oh, the quick fans didn't didn't see who I am for real. 
Well, we, we saw, you know, it's funny. We saw a lot of like glimpses, right? A lot of, oh, like this guy has a lot of talent. Like you can see it, but it just, it didn't come to fruition. And I was going to ask you, did the Quakes uh, actually extend an offer for you to stay or did they no. not? No, because. No, no, they didn't. And I understand why they didn't. Because yeah. sometimes it's like, you watch what you have. Right. And I think it's also difficult to say you have to have a football eye to see mm. what I have. Because it, it's, it's difficult. Like sometimes, let's say they extended my contract and I will be a player, uh, the same player as the one that I have shown. Yeah. yeah. Then, of course, you don't do it. And it's, it's, it's a risk to take, especially if it's a player that comes from Europe. And I know that in, in MLS, you can have, you can't have that many foreign players yeah yeah so there's it's a, a international it's, limit so it's a risk, you know? yeah it's a risk um yeah. so i understand from their point of view that mm -hmm. you didn't uh, extend the contract which it's 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 uh natural not to not to do it but yeah but it's, that's something that i felt like especially you know the quick fans there you know i love fans who are who are who are nice they are yeah. polite you know and you know the quick fans were, were like that and i felt like uh, i wanted to pay pay them back but I couldn't do it like when I was there, you know, and, you know, in back of my mind, I'm not going to say that this will happen, but in my back of my mind, you know, I, I took the, the coach education, you know, I've been a coach in Sweden yeah. while I was playing AIK. And, and I was thinking like maybe sometimes uh, some, someday in the future, maybe I can come and coach San Jose Quakes. You oh, know, wow. And then from there, maybe I can, you know, pay them back, you know, as a, yeah, as a coach, awesome. you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You, you never know. I hope that that, that happens, but because uh, some, I don't know, it's, I don't have the other, other way of paying them back, you know, for their, <laughs> yeah, for their hospitality. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome though, that you, that you're so humble in that sense that you, you feel like you owe us something, but I mean, yeah. we're grateful that you wanted to even be a quake, right? So you wanted to put on that black and blue. Um, what made yeah. you choose the number 10? So uh, I will, well, I had I had number ten in mm. AIK before I came to San Jose, mm. uh, and then I just say, yeah, let's continue on on that. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. And there was nobody had it, so I just yeah, so I just took it. And the added pressure with being the ten, you always felt like that was okay. That that doesn't matter. Yeah. No, well, you know when if if I was twenty maybe, but yeah. you know I, I you know since I was thirty years old I. You have to imagine, you have to think about this. I play in front of fifty thousand people yeah, in right, Sweden, right, you know, right, in AIK. Right. When it, and we play derbies, and yeah. when we play derbies, it's not, you know, it's that it's kind of can, can get very hostile. Yeah, of you know? course. You know, and you don't want to you don't want to play bad. You know? Yeah. And so when you come from that uh, world. Right, right. If number, if number 10 is someone is going to be a pressure, no, it's not. It's, <laughs> right, it's, right, right. it's not. It's just, yeah, I like number 10 and I want to play as good as I could. Awesome. What was your, um, what was your favorite Quakes? I mean, you only wore one Earthquakes jersey, but did you see any of the other ones? Did you like any of the other ones? No, I no, I didn't. I, um, I still have the the quake uh, shirt, and you know when I'm I'm looking at houses now, and when I get a bigger house, I I want to ha like have a, I'm not gonna say a museum, but at least <laughs> have some shirt up, and yeah. you know the the quake uh, shirt would be one of those, it, and with the PK shirt you know, right next to it, yeah, PK shirt, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but the the quake uh, sh shirt is something that I yeah. won't I won't go give away to somebody else. I will have it with me as a as a memory. Definitely. And maybe one day you can bring it when you're coaching, right? Be like, Hey, look at this. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. And I hope that if you coach the quiz that also it goes, it goes good. Then at least right. you say, you know what? Now I paid off uh, the, the journey that I started. Yeah. And um, talking a little bit about San Jose, did you get to travel at all in San Jose? Did you get to experience like the local nature, like Lake Tahoe or Santa Cruz, things like that? So what we did is, uh, you know, my my wife were pregnant, mm. uh, and she gave birth in in, in San Jose in, oh, wow. in October. Yeah, in October, um, and you know what? We just we just chilled in in San Jose. Yeah. Um, but after the season, well, it's, it it wasn't 
the city sounds it was more like we went to LA and then we went mm. to Vegas just to see because it's all around. Right. But in San Jose, we didn't we didn't do that much, that much mm. uh, adventurous stuff. No, no, we didn't. If you ever come back, or I'm in Japan, but if you ever go back to San Jose, um, go to Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe is beautiful. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. something really nice. Um, yeah. Did you try any food that was new to you and your wife? No, in San Jose, no. No, because you know I, like I said before, I uh, I come from a from an immigrant uh, community in Sweden. Yeah, that's true. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I have, you know, I have everything. Latino food. Yeah. You know, Mexican food, Lebanese yeah. food, Japanese food, African right. food. No, like I have tried the whole world in Sweden. Mm. So for me, it's not anything different to come to San Jose and say, "What's what's this food type of food?" No, I have <laughs> yeah, spicy. You already had it. Spicy. Yeah. I already have everything, you know. So, you know, um, all my friends, they, I think we can cover all continent in the world except Australia, maybe. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, my closest friends, you know. That's so, awesome. uh, yeah. So uh, I'm coming from that type of world. So it's, it's yeah. the world. The food is like no. I it wasn't any anything that I haven't uh, tried before. Mm. And um, do you still keep in touch with any of the guys down in San Jose, or did did you? kind of lose all connection yeah I, I lost like you know sometimes i i feel like the way it went down in, in san jose mm -hmm. i felt like you know what let me just start over in ark mm. you know and also that i didn't i wasn't that many that many years in in san jose i was there right. for like i think six months i was in august no but yeah. i was in august and i think the season it finished in october you know <laughs> so <laughs> like three so, months you know yeah. yeah, there's not there's not a lot of, but I I came close to um, uh, uh, Imperial uh, yeah. when I was was there and oh yeah, Simon Andres, Dawkins. yeah 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 Andres yeah Andres I had and a, Simon I, Dawkins. I had Andres on and I also had Simon Dawkins on the show so yeah yeah so, so the yeah, great both, guys I, yeah both I uh, I came close to in in um, in San Jose but like I you know what happened with the contacts it's more like it fades out. Yeah, right, right without right, right. any without any any beef or something um, yeah <laughs> but if somebody writes to you sometimes you will write back but yeah. it's like, like it's not only sounds there you know it's typical like if you if you ask me how many players do i have in, in my contact with my la oh, my oh, 15 gosh. years i'd be a pro yeah maybe it's five you know <laughs> um it's also because i have my foundation in in sweden like in right, stockholm right. i have my you know i i'm that type of guy who have five six friends yeah, and I don't want new friends. Yeah, I, I, understand. I understand. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. this is my this is my closest friends. I have my family. I have my wife's family. Yeah, that's it. Those I die for. I do anything for them. And then other people, if they're nice to me, I'm nice to them back. It's no problem. But yeah, to have like a lot of big contacts uh, network, mm. well, that's that's not me. Makes sense. That makes sense. Always having a close, you know, close knit friend group is is the best. That's that's how I am too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> totally understand. Yeah. Um, yeah. and so now let's go ahead and talk about your time after San Jose. Um, you went yeah. back to Sweden, and, and a lot yeah. of our fans want to know you became the captain. How did that go down? Right. So did they want you to come back to play for them? And was no, it like so? We'll give you the what shirt. Happened was, yeah. Yeah. No. What happened was like. So I finished the 2016 season with with San Jose, mm -hmm. and then 2017. Uh, well, after San Jose, I just told my my wife, you know what, I just want to go back to Stockholm because I I want to be close to friend, family and friends, and yeah. you know my daughter is is uh, is born, and let's let her meet our our parents, you know, and yeah. because uh, me and my wife are the first uh, children of our family who gets. A child. So for mm. my parents, it's the first time their grand grandmother, grandfather, and right. my my wife's side too. So we just said, you know what? It was fun for one year. Let's go back to Stockholm yeah. and just settle settle in, you know. And then 2017, I just told them like, hey, I want to come back. Uh, and I came back, and I wasn't a captain bef uh, first, yeah, because we had another captain who played there since 2008. That will be yeah, nine years. Nine years, years. yeah, years. nine yeah, years. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. So we played 2017. I think we came third or second in the, in the mm -hmm. league. Um, and then 2018, our captain in February, I think it was, like one month into the preseason, 
he uh, they look at his heart and oh, wow. yeah it was a it was a problem mm-hmm. he had to stop football and then i was the vice captain yeah uh, and they told me it was like more it was natural that i would i would be the the captain in in, in february um yeah. You know, and from there, I've been captain since since that day. Okay, that, that I mean, you deserve it. I mean, look at all the goals you've scored in in Sweden and and all across your career. So definitely, you're a person they should all look up to. And and yeah. I'm glad I'm glad you sound like a leader when you talk to me. So it definitely seems like you guys deserve all the trophies that you guys won. So yeah, um, no, it was it was nice to like yeah. you know, we were going into the preseason with with a captain. Mm. And then out of nowhere, they're like, from like from yesterday to today, they're like, you're gonna be captain now, you know. And <laughs> well, I had I had to zoom out, like, okay, how how am I gonna do this? Right. Uh, the whole the whole year, you know. And we managed, like, after you know, after two weeks, you come into the to the role. I've been I've been a leader before, but yeah, it's different when you are like the one who people look at, you know what I mean? Right. And it just took you took me two two weeks to like. To settle in, and then the, the mm. nice thing about that that year is that we won we won the gold. Yeah, right. Like he hasn't won, won the gold in like nine years before oh, that. Wow. So, so it was like my first big trophy in, in my career. So it was like the that year was like I think probably the best in my whole career. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, yeah, especially winning the gold after bringing nine years of nothing. That's definitely yeah. in your first year of captain. So that's that must have been a great yeah. feeling. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I, I almost, I almost got to get a Goitam AIK shirt now. What am I doing? You know, I got to put it yeah. on my ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll fix one for you. No problem. Hey, yeah, you, you know, shipping to Japan isn't that bad. You know? <laughs> yeah, I'll fix it. I'll fix it. No worries. Yeah, I don't, you don't worry. Um, what I was going to say is, um, so the Quakes, when you left, actually got another Swedish player called uh, Magnus Eriksson. Did yes. you, did you know of this player? Did you play against him in Sweden at all? Did yeah, you... yeah. He played play a lot. Like he played in Malmo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played in uh, uh, Jurgården, which is like the biggest rival to AK. Right, right, right. That's what I thought. Uh, like the derby team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I knew, uh, I knew who, like who he was before mm-hmm. the Quicks, and he's now also in, in Jurgården playing in in our league. So I, yeah, I knew who, who he was before. Yeah, and it, it, did you ever like? Did you see the headline of the transfer? You're like, oh wow, like that's. That's crazy. They went with um, a player that I never would have thought, you know, that they would go to the earthquakes. <laughs> you know, uh, actually, I saw him and I also saw Mickey Stoddard, you know, the, the Swedish oh, yeah, coach. Oh, yeah, yeah, Stoddard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I know him because he, he was a former AIK uh, coach, like, before I came to AIK. So oh, I knew wow. him also. Like, And I'm like, like well, it's maybe going to become a, a Swedish colony in, in San Jose. <laughs> right. But... Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's actually yeah. I I did I forgot that Mickey Starry was a uh, was a Swedish coach too. So that's yeah. yeah. I mean they they like the, their Swedes, you know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, but it's uh, it's fun that that you know, like in, yeah. in Sweden, you know, San Jose doesn't get that big of a he- headlines. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Um, did do Swedish people know of San Jose just because? I mean a player from their biggest club went to us. And then as well as you, you went to us and then went back to AIK. So do they, yeah. do they ever like maybe tune in or. Yeah. You know, it's um, the time difference, right? It, yeah, it's a little harder. No, but it's also, you know, before uh, in LA galaxy, uh, you had Willemson and you have Stefan Ishishaki there. Uh, and so Swedish people like, Oh, we know LA galaxy. And also Zlatan right. went to, to LA galaxy. They know about that. And then, yeah. San Jose a little, bit, a little bit more because of you know Ericsson and I was there and uh, Mika Starry was there so they get a, a glimpse of of who uh, what San Jose is yeah uh, right. but I don't think that they like follow the, follow the it, league yeah. that much no that makes sense that makes sense um yeah. so do you plan on how so how long is your current contract are do you plan on staying for quite a while so well I'm 36. Yeah. Um, I'm becoming 37 in, in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, you know, I had, uh, I, I, for obvious reason, I understand that AIK only extends your contract with one year because uh, I'm in that age where, yeah. you know, things can happen. So uh, I have extended my, my contract one year at a time, three years in a row now. Oh wow! Yes. So yeah, so I'm just playing year by year, and I hopefully like if if the body feels good, I, I want to play as 
as, as long as I can. Um, yeah. But if I feel like, for example, in, in fall, I always take a d- decision in the fall, like, oh, September, October. If I feel like oof, my body, it's not, it's not going to be able to yeah. play, then I'm going to finish it. Yeah, I mean, but you're still banging in a lot of goals, man. Like you, you're you're still playing plus ten goals per season, so yeah. it, it's 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 been a good ride. So I would say, you know, keep keep at it, man. Don't don't just, give it just up. Do like, you nah, can always, just do like Wanda, Wandalowski, you know. So. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was just gonna say, <laughs> yeah. you know, be the Wandalowski of Sweden. But I mean, yeah. you could you could always coach later. That's you could always coach. Yeah, later. I always. No, yeah. no, I try to play as long as I can. But yeah. At the same time, I don't want to be this player who. Who are in the team just because because i when i yeah. play in a team i really want to fight for that starting position yeah of course you know and because i, I also want to finish with dignity so yeah. how like in, in always in september october when it's like two months left of the season mm-hmm. i need to listen to my body if i feel like you know what i have one year more then i would tell the club i have one year more and then it's up to the club yeah. what they want to decide yeah and that, and, yeah, that's I, I, I can't wait to hear like, or I'm, watch your game and see how you're going to do this next year. I mean, I got, I got to see yeah. something, right? <laughs> right yeah, you know, no. How is Sweden with the COVID right now? Are they allowing fans in or do you know? No, we, we have no fans, mm. uh, but we train and play uh, like, like before, but with yeah. no fans. And let's see now we have a vaccine coming in. Right. Um, let's see how quick that goes. And, you know, let's see how the statistics uh, are developing during, during this, uh, during the spring. Yeah. Um, we play, cause now we play Swedish cup until, mm-hmm. um, yeah, well, until you, you go out or uh, until you win it. And then the league start in, in April mm-hmm. and from April to the, uh, what do you call it? The break. It's only eight games. Mm. because then after Euros uh, are going are gonna to be played. Yeah, right, right. So I don't think we're going to have supporters on those eight games, but mm-hmm. hopefully like summer comes, a vacation, yeah. uh, vaccine is here. Maybe when the second round of, of, of 22 games, maybe yeah. the supporter can come because for me, it's been kind of hard because I like, I like that pressure when you, know, when you, have, when right. you play a derby, yeah. 30, 40, 50,000 people. And if you do something bad, they will, they will, that, they will say boo to you. And, <laughs> you know, you have to like step up. You're like, you know what? I'm going to show them, you know what yeah. I mean? And yeah. if you do something nice, you know, they are there to cheer you up. And that finish, you know, that, that, that thing, it's kind of hard to imagine your head with no support uh, on, on the stands. And yeah, it's exactly. like, yeah. It's, it's hard like to a, drive like yourself. A, yeah. Yeah. It's like a friendly game. Yeah, <laughs> every time you play, and yeah. well, it's 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 good for our young players because they, they have no pressure. No pressure. Play. Yeah. yeah, if they make mistakes, you just yeah keep on playing. Uh, but for me, who've been like living with this pressure, yeah, it's no pressure now. It's more like a good feeling, and I hope that we get a supporter this year so that that feeling came back. But I think it's gonna be strange if to play the first game with with uh, supporters because yeah. you like. I'm not used Whoa. to this. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. You got to go back to yeah. the normal, right? So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, I hope, I hope, I mean, supporters can get out there soon. I, maybe, maybe I, uh, you know, go to Sweden, you know, from Japan. So, yeah. <laughs> I got to see, I got to see a game. I got to see you play. I got to yeah. see the, the Swedish Wondolowski right here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just come up. You tell me when you're coming. I'll fix your tickets. We go no, out. No, you know, man. Like that. Yeah. I, I'm blushing right now. I'm red. I'm red. <laughs> yeah, just come. No, no problem, man. I appreciate that, friend. Well, thank you. I mean, this has been a great interview. Um, this is going to probably, we're, we're going to wrap it up. Um, if yep. anybody wants to find you on social media, where can they find you? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I have uh, Twitter and yeah. uh, and Instagram. Uh, those are the two platforms that I, that I use. Um, yeah. I think, uh, I'm not sure, but I think I'm both. If you just... Uh, search my my name Heno Goitam and then yeah. the, the blue blue dot or whatever you call the it verified blue, yeah <laughs> yeah the, that one it will come out and then you see it's me so I have I have both Instagram and, and Twitter awesome and, and Quakes fans if you're listening you gotta show Hanok some love I mean he needs he needs some Quakes fans in his life then we have a lot of love to give and that's for sure um but no, I, they, they gave me they gave me a lot during the season I'm I'm very <laughs> thankful for that also well I appreciate it Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a no it's been a real blessing to have you on. And all I have to say is uh, go Quakes and then go AIK, right? <laughs> yeah, same to you. Uh, thank you for me for being in the 
in the podcast and um, uh, good luck in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.